Why does this happen? Uh, Like a lot of things, we really can't point to and say, connect these dots and we'll tell you that you're going to wind up with a psychopath. We do know that there does seem to be a genetic factor, meaning that if there's someone in the family that has this history, that it's more likely to reoccur in the family. Environmental factors can influence this if this has been role modeled by someone in the family, if there are environmental conditions where this kind of behavior is rewarded or at least not punished or rewards withheld, it's likely to occur. And it can occur pursuant to traumatic brain injuries where parts of the brain where impulse control is generally asserted is just simply not in control anymore because the behavior inhibition is just not there. So you may see this as early as childhood. And how is it going to express then? You're going to see fire setting because they don't have impulse control. You may see cruelty to animals because they don't have the ability or the opportunity or the guts to be cruel to peers or adults. So you'll see cruelty to small animals that can't really fight back. And again, as I say, you'll see conflict with authority at every level of their life. As I said, they often have legal problems because they don't follow the rules and they violate other people's rights. And that gets them called out. That gets them in trouble. And they tend to act out impulsively. And when I say impulsively, they don't sit there and think, okay, if I do A, B could happen. Let me weigh that out. No, they don't do that. They don't say, if I drive down this road at twice the speed limit, a child could come out of a driveway and I wouldn't be able to stop. They don't think that. They just think it's fun to go fast, so off they go. They don't think about the consequences of their actions. You've heard me say many times, you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. They don't even think about consequences. They just choose the behavior. Now, you're going to see these people display a lot of irritability. Their tolerance levels, the threshold for them flying off the handle, for them getting angry, for them blowing up and losing their temper is very low. Their distress tolerance is not good. They're kind of hair-triggered. So you're going to see a lot of aggressiveness, a lot of irritability. And as a result, they tend to get into a lot of physical confrontations. They have real difficulty putting themselves in someone else's shoes. I hear parents a lot of times talking to children that are on a path to antisocial behavior, and they'll say to the child, now, come here, stand right here. How do you think that made him feel? We get a blank stare because the child has no idea. So they just look at the parent like, I don't know. Well, you just stand here till you think about it. Well, you need to go get him some water and a diaper because he's going to be there a long time. He doesn't know. And it's like asking him to get taller. If you ask someone of this orientation to give you an empathetic answer, to stand in another person's shoes and tell you how they feel, you might as well be asking them to get taller. You can stand there till the cows come home. They cannot give you an answer. They do not know. They often have poor or abusive relationships with others because of just that reason. They don't think this is going to hurt their feelings, so they behave in a way that hurts the other person's feelings because they don't know that, hey, this is going to really make them feel bad. And I get that, and I don't want to create that. They don't think that. So they just vent. It's cathartic for them. They just let go without consideration for how it makes other people feel. They will lie when the truth would do better. It's just their adjustment. They just lie. Then they don't even think about lying. Let's take just a minute here to talk about why people lie. And there are several reasons. They lie to take what is not rightfully theirs. And this type of personality disorder will do that. They will lie to take what is not rightfully, take credit for something, 
claim a reward that is not theirs, they'll lie to get something that they're not entitled to. They lie to escape accountability. That's one of the big reasons people lie. Like, oh, I didn't do it. No, no, it wasn't me. They lie to create a fantasy, to create false self-esteem, because in their heart of hearts, they think they're boring. They think their life is just really not very interesting, so they create this fantasy, which ties in to one and two. They don't want to be accountable for doing mundane work, and they want to take credit for things they didn't earn. So they'll take credit for some heroic act. They'll take credit for solving some problem. They want to get admiration. They want to get attention. They lie to avoid punishment. They lie to inflict pain on others. They lie to feel better in the moment. They will steal admiration. They will let you believe they did something knowing that it's going to be found out. But in the moment, they get admiration and they feed off of that. And they'll lie to gain advantage over other people. They'll lie to get an edge, to get some advantage that they can lord over other people. Do they feel bad about that, that they cheated? No. To them, there is no cheating. It's just, hey, you do what it takes to get ahead. It's not cheating. It's just part of the game. There's not a matter of honor and integrity for them. It just is what it is. Now, if you have a child with a conduct disorder, you've been to the pediatrician and they say, look, there's a conduct disorder here, then this could grow up into an antisocial personality. And you've heard so many times, early detection and early intervention in any disorder, any disease is good. So if you're seeing a child that behaves in this way, the sooner you intervene, the better off you are. So don't ignore this thinking they're going to grow out of it because they're not going to grow out of it. And they're a lot easier to manage at 40 pounds and five years old than they are at 140 and 14. So you're better off to deal with it as soon as you can. Now, why am I talking about this now? And why did I do this in this order? Well, because this particular disorder, antisocial personality, has components of the borderline personality and the narcissistic personality disorder. You know, think about the things that I just said describing the antisocial personality. Deceitful, manipulative, impulsive, reckless. You've heard a lot of those things in the borderline personality. You've heard some of those things about the narcissist. All of those things are rolled in here, but here they tend to be pretty malevolent with them. They're actually doing this in a very hurtful way. They're weaponizing it. They're aiming it. Now, this is going to express in relationships. It can be spousal or child abuse. These folks tend to be overrepresented in the alcohol or substance abuse population, jail or prison, as I said. Any kind of assault, aggression against others. And there's comorbidity here. This doesn't occur in isolation. These people also suffer with a lot of depression and anxiety. A lot of times... These people can be very successful for short periods of time, but it does tend to catch up with them. So you see them sometimes homeless, low socioeconomic status, and they tend to have shorter life expectancy because they take high-risk behaviors. They're irresponsible. They're overrepresented in cause of death from violence. Because again, there's a lot of conflict. These people get in situations where they wind up getting killed. 